Three days ago, a patient came to my office. And she sat down in front of me, had no idea what she was going to tell me about, but she starts to tell me a story about how she's been to eight integrative physicians that do only integrative practice in their offices for the 150 miles surrounding me. So, of course, I listened very carefully to this story. She takes out, you cannot imagine how many functional studies that have been done and lays them out in front of me and says, I am mercury poisoned, I've been out of work, I am totally disabled, and no one, no one has helped me yet. So I looked at the progression and the physicians did a great job. As a matter of fact, she was basically running off the page on the mercury, but then suddenly, as of now, it was back to the normal range and even then some. But she still didn't feel good. The reason is because these eight good physicians focused on one particular area. And I know after you go through these classes, it's easy to just focus on one particular area. Hormone replacement, heavy metal intoxication. The problem is, the human body is so much, I mean so much more complex, that to think that way is not only naive, foolish, but will end up with poor treatment outcomes. I give you the example that to the DNA every day, there are 868 trillion offenses per second. So every second we sit here, there are 868 trillion offenses. To think that we can easily overcome them with one modality or one treatment or one evaluation is totally foolish and will end up having horrible treatment failures for you. Today, what I want to do is I want to take you on a little bit of a journey. I have a lot of slides, but I'll do the best I can to try to put together this idea of regenerative medicine. It's not just one slot, it's many slots and many slots occurring simultaneously. If you can do that, then I've accomplished what I came to do today. And that's the key. Can you recognize that all the things you're listening to need to be put together? Let's step back first and look at a definition that I'm not comfortable with of anti-aging, which is used or tending to prevent or lessen the effects of aging. I don't know what that means. But that's the definition. Let's look at regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine says, as a noun, it's a branch of medicine studying the body's mechanisms for healing itself. Well, that's all great. But that still doesn't give me what I'm looking for. So what I decided was, as I combed through books, I'm going to take a definition from 27 years of doing this and put a definition together that makes sense that we as practitioners in anti-aging can really live with. And this is what I came up with. It's an emerging science that is an amalgamation of multiple disciplines, but not limited to, molecular biology, cell physiology, nutrition, genetics, cellular biology, endocrinology, and biochemistry with an appreciation of the cellular milieu with a focus to prevent, retard, and reverse the aging process regardless of the cause. Believe it or not, that mouthful was the only way I could ever stand in front of a group or write a paper in the future that made sense to me. If we don't look to our basic scientists and look to the basic sciences, each one of them, and put the pieces and parts together, then we cannot be effective as clinicians that are delivering this care to patients. So I take you back to uh, the beginning for me. 27 years ago, I noticed as a resident there were a group of people getting patients, physicians, out of the hospital much quicker than the other group were. What was the difference? The only difference that I saw was they were using high doses of intravenous vitamin C and vitamin minerals. Now, I was just stepped out of medical school. It didn't make sense to me because I was told, if, and we did this in physiology, many of you might have, you take vitamin C, they made you go to the lab, urinate two hours later, and they say, see, it's all in the urine. And, and that's how we were taught. And yet these patients were getting out quicker. So something said to me, it's time to investigate this kind of medicine, which I did for 28 years. But six years ago, I decided then to start looking at 
stem cell. I was invited to look at stem cell. I knew nothing about it six, almost seven years ago, but I was invited to take a look at this. I felt, for me, for my patients, that it was important enough for me to embrace this new technology because I saw it as a new paradigm and a new cutting edge, and that it would have to be incorporated with what I was doing with the other things which could take someone so far. You can't anti-age. You can regenerate if you have all the components simultaneously, including stem cell transplant. So I decided what I thought was right and what other attorneys told me was right to begin practicing. Um, but there was an agency that felt that I wasn't practicing properly. And so I ended up chapter nine in a new textbook or a new book that just came out by a brilliant attorney, Rick Jaffe, and one of the best defendant attorneys in the country, USA, being a chapter in a book as a maverick. Well, I like the word maverick if it means stepping out of the box, looking back and seeing I didn't have all the tools that I should have had. If that what it means, and at the end of the day that I can walk away from this podium and walk away from my career saying I've done something special for my patient out of the ordinary that's helped them it makes sense. Yesterday I was speaking to an internist, maybe he's in the room, I'm not, and I, he said to me the perfect thing. He said, you know, I've been an internist for 30 years, he says, and we don't do a damn thing for chronic disease. That hit me, because I said, I understand. This particular slide is showing the hematopoietic lineage. A lot of you know about using cord blood, etc. I'm going to try to give you, A, a primer of stem cells in a, as fast fashion as I can, but a clear fashion, what regenerative medicine must include, how to use some testing, and walk away with how maybe you can treat your patients better. And the guys tell me they, I have to get them to lunch sooner or later, so I have to do that all within 33 minutes. Let's see if we can do it. This is my center outside. The way we identify whether or not a stem cell is of one lineage or another is by its receptors. These receptors that you see here on the slides are receptors for hematopoietic. These are precursors to the immune system. Yes, I know there is plasticity. Some of the cells can divide and become maybe other things. But there's an argument about that, not for this particular session, but for most part. If you take a stem cell that is from a cord blood origin or an origin to become the hematopoietic line, like you saw before, they will divide and become your immune system. If you want another cell, uh, like a neuronal cell, you have to look for different receptors, and this is what our labs do. If you want to look for a mesenchymal type of cell, also a great scaffolding cell, wonderful cell to be used in combination. Why? It's never rejected. I can walk around the room and give everybody mesenchymal stem cells that are from somebody else in this room. They will never be rejected. They act very much like a cancer, and they are ignored by the immune system. These are the receptors. Um, this is some of the work that we were doing, I'll talk about in just a minute. But here are some of the challenges. The first challenge, which I like a lot, is the, uh, is the embryonic stem cell. The embryonic stem cell, I know everyone said, well, can't we reverse it and tissue and reprogram? The point is, if you talk to the cell biologists, as I suggested earlier, we need to speak to all these scientists. If you take back a stem cell in time, which we can do, and make it an earlier precursor, we do not know whether or not that precursor has the capability to diversify into the tissues that it needs to do. We don't really know. No one knows. But if you take an embryonic stem cell, which, by the way, is the beginning, and I'll show you shortly what I mean, of life that becomes everything you are from your hair to your toenails, you have the best chance for engraftment with this kind of cell. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You're going to say, well, I, I read, I know I read. Hey, uh, Mitchell, I read this thing about if you, if you use an embryonic stem cell, you're going to have a problem because it, it can become a tumor. And what you read was in nude mice. I don't mean nude like undressed mice. I mean nude like the, the mouse that has no immune system. And if you do not do a complete myeloablative uh, therapy, mean, meaning take away the bone marrow totally, this should not happen. And there's several people in the world that have proven that I am correct. 